Hi folks, John Cordisco back again with another great chess video for you. This is a heck of a game. It's from the 5th London Chess Classic 2013. Round 1 between Vladimir Kramnik, his white from Russia, former world champion. And Peter Fiddler, also from Russia. Peter placed third in the last candidate's final. Kramnik tied with Magnus Carlsen and lost on tie breaks, and we all know Magnus went on to win the World Championship just a few weeks ago. Peter's seven-time Russian champion. Probably speaks better English than I do, and I'm an American. And he's also a cricket fanatic for all you guys out there in the UK and India and some of the Commonwealth countries that love cricket. Anyway, it's round one. It's going to be a modern defense. It's Fiddler's black, Kramnik's white. We'll go breeze through the opening a little bit here. I'm not really up on modern defense. If any of you want to pause the video and kind of study it, feel free. Knight to c6, castles, bishop, pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop g5. That's a pretty good position. It's an awkward spot for that knight on h5, but to tell you the truth, there's nothing really there to harass him. Uh, you might be able to move this knight. You know, somewhere, and then Bishop takes to bust up his pawns. But then again, you're going to leave an open file on your king. So that might be a good spot for that knight. Knight to f6. C4. H6. Bishop e3. D5. Knight. Bishop e6. Knight. Castles. Now, being an amateur player than I am, I'm only rated just under 1,600 U.S. Chess Federation rating. When you get pawns like the black pawn on d5, I notice us amateurs, we always capture almost right away. We never leave the tension on the board. These guys love to do that, to leave the tension on the board, because it's not in their best interest to capture. And we've got to learn those kind of things if we're going to get any better. Knight takes, pawn takes, b3, d takes, b takes, knight e8. That was an interesting move there. Computer suggests either rook to b8 or rook to e8 or queen to d6. And knight to e8 was interesting by Swindler. Rook to c1. Right now it shows about a third of a pawn advantage on my Fritz 13 computer, which is running off screen for white. Knight to d6. And that was white's plan all along, d5. That was his plan break. C takes, knight takes, rook e8, knight takes c7. I think bishop f3 was seriously worth considering. Because after the rook moves, bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes. I kind of like white here. It's not a huge advantage by any means, but I think it's a heck of a lot easier to play. After knight takes c7, queen takes c7, and that's the computer that did that. It's showing that black is ganging up on the c4 pawn. <laughs> Pretty funny. Bishop to f4 to pin the black knight against the queen. Rook over, c5, hitting the knight. Knight to e8, and of course we notice that the queen's not in prey. Because this rook is now hitting this. Bishop takes, rook takes, rook takes, knight takes. That was a real strange maneuver. And what happened there was now white has a rook and a pawn for two of black's minor pieces, a bishop and a knight. Even in score, we'll have to see how the two bishops work out for Fiddler. Fiddler. Bishop c4, asking for a trade right away. Rook c4, bishop hitting the c-pawn, c6, bishop comes up. This is what Kramnik loves, these grinding positions that if you have a tiny advantage and try to make the best of it. He's like Magnus Carlsen that way, he was complete, these completely dead positions. I'm not saying this one is dead, but they love those things, and they grind you in the slowly but surely. It's kind of like the frog in the, in the water theory. 
As you slowly, the heat goes higher and higher, the frog doesn't notice until it's too late. And now white lashes out. G4. Chasing away the bishop. Bishop B6. Those two bishops are very strong there. Very strong. Rook over. Rook to C8. It's trying to go after that isolated C pawn. <coughs> Excuse me. Rook to D7. Now well, things are starting to heat up a little bit. We got a lot of stuff going on here. King over. That rook on d7 is a beautiful piece. It really is. Just out of curiosity, if any of you were wondering, after bishop takes, c takes, rook to d8, rook takes c7, and of course, black is doomed. <laughs> Those free pawns aren't so free. Bishop takes c6. Knight takes rook to c4. This is a complicated, well, I guess technically it's an ending. There's a lot of pieces on the board, but this is a complicated ending. I'll tell you, right now, black's up about a point and a quarter. It's still the same material. White has a rook and a pawn for two minor pieces. Bishop c5. Now, you got to remember, these guys are playing rapid. I believe the time control was either 20 or 25 minutes with a 10 second increment. And these guys are going to be getting low. We're on move 32 now. King to f1. And they got to calculate all this stuff. g5. And here is where Kramnik goofs. Right now, it's about almost about a point advantage for black, which is Fiddler. Kramnik goes rook to a4. And it jumps to over a point and a half. He should have went rook to b7 instead. That was a better chance. After rook to a4, rook takes, rook takes. He's figured he's trading pawns off. Rook to b6, rook to d2. And slowly but surely, black is starting to win this game. Knight to f4. This is an incredibly complicated rook and minor piece ending. Rook to d1. Great move coming up here by Fiddler. Bishop d4. Rook to f5. Now, what would have happened if White took the bishop? Rook to b1 check and make the foul. So that bishop wasn't free. Bishop f6. a4. Here comes the white pawn. King to g7. h4. Rook to b2. H takes, H takes, king to G1. Looks like black's trying to hem in white's king. Rook to A2, A5, knight to E6, rook to D6. Complicated, complicated, complicated. you got to figure out bishop skewers and knight forks, and oh boy. Rook to A4, and remember, they're playing rapid. F3. Bishop to d4. I think that was a mistake letting White's king out of that net. King to f1. Now, they're coming up with a mate trap. Rook takes. King to f8. King to e1. Bishop e3. Here comes the net around White's king. Rook to e5. Rook to a1 check. Rook to d1. Rook to a2. Great stuff. Great stuff. We all see why Rook can't take bishop. Because knight will come here check. And win the rook here. Rook to d8 check. King to g7. King to d1. And here's where I think Fiddler lets him off the hook a little bit. Rook to a3. I think he's better off going knight to g2. Just to keep that king hemmed in. After rook to a3. King to c2. Knight to e6. Now it looks like white's going to be able to save this. After knight to e6. 
White's up almost a pawn and a half. Rook to d7 by Kramnik. This is starting to look drosh. And then... Sviddler Goose. And a goose pretty bad. King to g6. I think better would have been king to f8. And then king to b2. Bishop. Rook takes. Bishop checks. What else can you do? Of course, you see the king can't take here. That would be a sweet check. And then pick up the other rook. That would be sweet. If knight took, rook takes check, it's just, it's doomed. And white went king to b2. And that's where Peter Fiddler, seven-time Russian champion, resigned. These guys are great players. Both of them are. I can't even tell you how good these guys are. It's indescribable. And they're playing rapid. I thought this was a really, really fascinating game. I would tell anyone that's a chess fan to go to the website LondonChessClassic.com That's LondonChessClassic.com There's a charity that this tournament is really about. It's for chess in schools and communities in the UK. They're getting in primary schools all over England. It's a great thing. Donate money if you can, even if it's only $5 U.S. or £5 uh, in the U.K. or whatever it is. They have PayPal, many other ways to pay. It's a great charity. Uh, they said if every person that watched this online during the course of the tournament donated £1, it would pay for the tournament, all the teaching of the kids in schools, and next year's tournament. So, And also, if you go to LondonChessClassic.com, you can look at the old videos from prior years, all great stuff, and the games video they're being played so far in this tournament. Anyway, folks, that's the game. I hope you enjoyed it. Went a little quick through it. You can always slow down the video and take a look at it. What I like to do in other people's videos is set up a board in pieces and try to figure out stuff myself. It's kind of cool. I want you to remember, if you think chess is just a game. You're not playing it right. And I hope to see everyone in my next videos. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. And I also want to thank my many, many new subscribers I've received in the last few months, several dozen. I personally appreciate it. And everyone take care. Bye-bye.